Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky implored President Biden to be the leader of peace. In a passionate and emotional plea to Congress, he pleaded for more help from U.S. lawmakers, invoking Pearl Harbor, saying, we need you right now. He compared what's going on in Ukraine to 9-11. He said Ukraine experiences the same every day now as America did during its own darkest days. Joining me live from Kosovo on The Morning Show, Nancy Soderberg, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and Director of the Public Service Leadership Program at UNF. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bruce. Zelensky got a standing ovation. It was obviously well received. Will it move the needle in ultimately getting what he wants, which is a no-fly zone, or as an alternative, air defense systems and fighter jets? I think it will. Uh, you can't watch that impassioned speech or the horrific video of innocent civilians being killed and not um, want to help. I think President Biden has already offered anti-aircraft systems, drones. I personally think a no-fly zone could be um, instituted without escalating dramatically. We could give the uh, Ukrainians the ability to do most of it, feeding them uh, information from a, a side. I don't think it would trigger World War III. This is a major call to action for all of Europe and the U.S. to defend Ukraine from this unprovoked, vicious attack. Um, he's been, uh, Putin has been accused of war crimes. Um, I think the question here is, are the sanctions going to be enough to have the people around Putin say enough's enough, let's find a way out of this? Um, that's the big question. Have we squeezed him enough to have a change? Of course, the negotiators are indicating that they're making progress for the first time in three weeks. So there are indications that things could get through, but Putin could also dramatically escalate this with chemical weapons. Um, and it's likely to get very bloody in the future. This is a, a major crisis that is far from over. Look, he's already violated international law with some of the weapons he's using. And President Biden, for the first time yesterday, called him a war criminal. Now, the, the speech featured a short video with harrowing scenes from the war-torn country. They were graphic, brutal, and showed the deadly toll the Russian attacks continue to take. Do you think the speech already has the U.S. and sparked debate anew among uh, you know, the Congress and Senate about what the U.S. is doing and can do to help Ukraine? I do. And you saw, you know, it's rare that you see bipartisanship in, in Congress today, but that was a unanimous standing ovation. People recognize that this is a humanitarian crisis, an invasion of a sovereign country, the killing of innocent civilians, all completely unprovoked. The Ukrainians did nothing. It's a false narrative that the Russians are putting forward, that they were, the Russians were being attacked in, uh, the Russian population in Ukraine was being attacked. None of that is true. Um, they're trying to call Zelensky, who's Jewish, uh, a Nazi as if it was World War II against the Germans again. And the disinformation is dramatic. And I think we're seeing the Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainians calling on the major media companies to stop the disinformation they took down a video uh, that was falsified, having President of Ukraine asking his soldiers to surrender. They took that down very quickly, but it's going to be an information war, a cyber war, and one on the ground. So this can escalate even uh, more greatly if the sanctions don't get through. We're going to keep ratcheting up the sanctions, racket, ratcheting up the defensive system. And I think President Zelensky's call to action across the globe is, is having an impact. It's very hard to look at those pictures, hear his plea, and not act. Uh, there's another issue that can't be ignored, the possibility that a Russian rocket could land in NATO territory. And this is a wake-up call for the West on defense. Will the U.S. maybe rethink its strategy on establishing bases in perhaps Germany and, and putting troops back in Europe? Well, yeah, there are those Monday morning quarterbackers who are saying, oh, we shouldn't have expanded NATO in the 90s. Imagine if we hadn't, how much farther uh, Putin would be going. So I think we need to double down, increase troops in the NATO countries, make it clear that this action will not stand. Um, Russia has already been attacking within 60 miles of the Polish border. Um, accidents happen in war. It's very possible that some of the regional countries um, could have the impact of that. And, and there's a million refugees that have already fled towards Poland. So they're already impacted. And the U.S. has a direct interest in stopping this. Putin will not stop at Ukraine. Um, he's isolated. He's not making rational decisions. He's falsifying these threats to the Russians in Ukraine, none of which are true. And the question is, will the people around him say enough is enough? They're getting their yacht seized, their assets seized, their family's assets seized, uh, all for nothing. And so I think this is 
Uh, Putin thought this would be over in days. It's now th the third week and no end in sight. So I think the West is doing the right thing and escalating, escalating, escalating. Um, and they'll just keep putting the pressure on until uh, Putin um, either clearly loses or his people turn on him or he changes his calculation and says, let's find a way out of this. So um, that, I'm, I'm the last one. That leads me to this. Uh, Zelensky's made it clear he understands Ukraine won't be able to join NATO and is ready to talk with Putin and bring an end to this war. What is going to be enough for Putin to bring an end to this insanity, this inhumanity? Well, exactly. There was no imminent action on NATO. That's what's so ridiculous about Putin uh, deciding to trigger this now. What he said is the only thing that will stop him is the total surrender of Ukraine and the ouster of Zelensky as president and the control of Ukraine, the return of Ukraine to the United States, uh, to, uh, to Russia. And I, I think that the quote that you're hearing more and more is from an 18th century Ukrainian poet, Taras Shev, uh, Shevchenko, uh, fight on and you will prevail. And you're hearing that quote all through the Ukrainian population now. And I think that they will fight on and I think they will prevail. The question is how bloody is it going to be? But I think the West can step up the pressure, step up the aid to the Ukrainians, step up the ability of the Ukrainians to defend themselves and shorten that time frame and shorten the bloodshed. Nancy Soderbergh. As always, I appreciate your time and your perspective. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.